people who've never lived in Michigan, never resided there, can vote. But the Constitution says the opposite of that. It's a small world music on, and she'll just, you know, her eyes will get even bigger than they already are, and she'll just go nuts on you. Plaintiff Barry's at a crossroads. What does she do? Does she follow the Constitution, or does she follow the instructions? Time will tell, and the court will decide. Jocelyn Benson, not happy. The Secretary of State, who is responsible for a lot of electoral shenanigans with her two BFFs, Big Gretch Rona, the governor, and Dana Nessel, the AG. The same Jocelyn Benson who made that videotape with that Disney music that sounded like she was going to murder an entire neighborhood of people if you don't properly certify your electoral votes. That video, we played it here and we're a little freaked out. She's in charge. She's the referee, the scoreboard keeper, the person who's going to be responsible for ultimately assembling the results of the election. And now she's being sued by the RNC and she's been busted before. We've read through some of her attempts. She was the same one who attempted to create a presumption of validity for signature requirements in the election manual that said if a signature comes in you look at it there's a presumption of validity don't think about it just you know okay check the rest of the form it's good but what does that mean if it's presumed valid it means you don't check it because you presume that it's valid that's her so she's getting sued now and we've got the michigan republican party and the rnc filing it and so let's see what's happening out of michigan the lawsuit comes with the summons and a bunch of the initial paperwork but here is what it looks like brought by the rnc they they tell us the Michigan Constitution allows Michigan residents and only Michigan residents to vote saying every citizen of the United States who has attained the age of 21 years and who has resided in this state six months and who meets the requirements of the local law shall be an elector and qualified to vote in any election the legislature shall define residents what does that mean for voting purposes and so they say thus while the right to vote in Michigan is an absolute constitutional right certain requirements must be met before you can vote we also know that Congress created the UOCAVA Act, Uniformed and Overseas Citizens Absentee Voting Act, UOCAVA, to ensure that members of the military and other American citizens who live outside the states may register and vote in federal elections, let's say out of country votes. UOCAVA provides that a member of the armed forces or an overseas citizen may vote in the state in which they previously resided. Now, UOCAVA has the effect of partially preempting state residency requirements for some overseas voters. So you don't actually have to be a resident if you qualify under UOCAVA. Now, despite Despite the Constitution's unambiguous adjure that no person may vote in Michigan unless they reside there, pretty clear, the Secretary of State, Jocelyn Benson, has distributed guidance that says the following. A United States citizen who has never resided in the United States, but who has a parent, legal guardian, or spouse who was last domiciled in Michigan is eligible to vote in Michigan so long as the citizen has not registered or voted in another state. That's in the manual. So people who've never lived in Michigan, never resided there, can vote. But the Constitution says the opposite of that. Only has resided, but again, Yulkava preempts that. So they're going to say Yulkava gives them the right to do that. Let's see. Now, on its face, Chapter 7 extends voter qualifications to individuals who've never resided in Michigan. As a result, certain people who've never resided in Michigan, or even in this country maybe, are registering to vote and voting in Michigan elections. Do they have any stake in Michigan? No. Michigan election officials have registered persons to vote who've never resided in Michigan and have allowed them to vote in state and federal elections. And the state wants people who live there to be impacting the elections. Now, this is a violation of Michigan's constitution. And as applied to the plaintiffs here, the people suing, it dilutes their votes and harms their organizational mission. Moreover, Chapter 7 subjects Cindy Berry, the citizen component of this complaint, to competing obligations, okay? On the one hand, she takes an oath to uphold the Michigan constitution. But on the other hand, she has to employ the secretary's instructions, which is to just accept people who've never lived or resided in Michigan, or even had a parent who did. Now, the Secretary of State shall develop instructions consistent with this act. So she's like, what do I do? The Constitution says they have to be residents, but the manual says they don't. So the parties are now suing, right? Michigan Republican Party, we know who they are. The RNC is suing. We know what they do. They assist everybody to get people out to vote. We also have confirmation that they've got interests in this. They tell us that counting of ineligible overseas ballots of people who never resided in Michigan will result in an inaccurate tally of the votes. And overseas voters overwhelmingly, right, this is the thing, support Democratic candidates. That's the ticker. Yahoo News even wrote an article about this. Could overseas voters be the ticket to winning? Leader of Democratic efforts to engage overseas voters, stating that something like 80% of Americans abroad vote Democrat. Oh, that's a fun fact. And I wasn't exactly sure what the reason was for opening up all the Yuokava stuff, but it's always structural like that. But apparently that's the data. 80% Democrats. That's why, yeah, bring those ballots in. We don't have to check 
check anything. Thus, the counting of the ballots of ineligible overseas voters will disproportionately harm Republicans and undermine Republican candidates. It will also dilute the lawful votes cast by actual people who resided in Michigan. Now, the Republican committees also spend significant resources to preserve voter confidence and turnout. These efforts are harmed when election officials accept absentee voter ballots without verifying residency as required under the Constitution. Plaintiff Cindy Berry is the clerk for the township of Chesterfield. Berry is sworn to uphold the Constitution, but she's also bound by the manual. So she has tried to reconcile both these things. This says you have to be a resident, but the secretary says you don't. And so now she is seeking a declaration. What are clerks supposed to do here? She's also a registered voter that's going to cast a ballot. And she also voted by absentee ballot in August 2024. And she wants her vote to count. Now, Jocelyn Benson, as we know, one of the worst, is Michigan's Secretary of State, the Chief Elections Officer of the state responsible for overseeing the conduct. When she instructs clerks on how to apply the law, the clerks are bound to follow the law or else she'll come after you, man. She'll put that It's a Small World music on and she'll just, you know, her eyes will get even bigger than they already are and she'll just go nuts on you. Now, defendant Jonathan Brader is the director of elections. He's being sued. The court has jurisdiction and there is an actual controversy here, all right? The Constitution says every citizen who has resided in this state for six months shall be qualified to vote. But the manual is the opposite. It says a U.S. citizen who has never resided in the United States is eligible to vote here. They're incompatible. She's giving rules that are opposite of the Constitution and everybody's harmed. Now the instruction injures the plaintiffs. Their votes are diluted and they don't know what to do. They've got competing instructions. There are injuries here that are ongoing. And so this court needs to grant relief here because no absent voter ballots have been tabulated. There are still times to address this problem and we need to settle this for this election and beyond. Now some more details on this, zooming in a little bit. Yulkava says each state shall permit people out of state to vote. Defines what overseas voters are. Overseas voters is defined in the U.S. Code. Put simply, Yulkava does not in toto preempt Michigan's residency requirement. Instead, it simply shapes the residency requirement to say that persons who were residents before going overseas must still be allowed to vote, assuming all other qualifications are met. That is, Yulkava only preempts Michigan's residency requirement to the extent that overseas voters who were last domiciled in Michigan must be allowed to register. In other words, it does not say that persons who never resided in Michigan must be allowed to vote. So in response to Yulkava, the Michigan then, so if the feds passed this overarching law, then Michigan came back out and they passed this statute. It provides a spouse or dependent of an overseas voter who is a citizen of the United States and who is accompanying that overseas voter and is not a qualified or registered elector anywhere else in the United States may apply for an absent ballot, even though the spouse or dependent is not a qualified elector of the state. So that is contrary to the constitution, right? So they actually passed a statute that's also unconstitutional, which requires that every voter be a resident. And further, this is even broader than Yulkava, which simply requires that voters who were residents of Michigan before going overseas be permitted to vote in Michigan. So in short then, that statute is also contrary to the constitution and that has not been preempted by any federal law. And so that provision is also constitutional. So it sounds like there's an election manual provision that they're unhappy with and there's a state statute that they're unhappy with. So federal law partially preempts the Constitution's residency requirement. So Yulkava overrides that for overseas voters to whom Yulkava provides the right to vote. But as discussed above, it does not completely preempt the residency. It just states that a person may continue to vote in Michigan if they previously resided there. But if they never resided there, they don't get the right to vote. Now, it only extends voter eligibility. If you had it, it extends it. But it doesn't create a new class of voters who may vote in Michigan, even though they've never reside there. And so it does not preempt the Constitution. And so here are the violations. They say chapter seven violates the Constitution. She has to perform the duties of conducting the election and her instructions are binding, but her instructions are contrary to the Constitution, which says every citizen who has resided in this state for six months. Now, while it's true that Yulkava has preempted some state laws to prevent overseas voters and absent uniformed services voters, it does not extend to people who've never resided in Michigan. And the secretary cannot defend her unconstitutional instruction by arguing that this statute, which is also unconstitutional, by the way, saying that that allows her to do this because that statute permits a spouse or a dependent of an overseas voter to vote, even though they're not qualified to do that. That goes even further than Yulkava by just shoehorning in a spouse or a dependent, right? So wife or kids, even though they've never lived there. So it does not have the force of federal preemption because it's opposed to the constitution, the state constitution. It can't carry protection under Yulkava. So it also has to go. For another, it's elementary that statutory law may not override constitutional law. That's like basic 101. Now, to the extent that there is a conflict between
between the statute and the constitutional law, the statute has to go bye-bye. And when faced with two incompatible laws, the secretary has to enforce the constitution. That's the structure, the hierarchy. Now here, the secretary has ignored the constitution and in favor is supporting that law. She's done that in error by sending ballots to and accepting ballots from overseas voters who have never resided in Michigan. They are facilitating ongoing violations of the constitution. And so as applied here, plaintiff Barry is at a crossroads. What does she do? Does she follow the constitution or does she follow the instructions? Time will tell and the court will decide. Now the constitution, as we know, talks about residency. And so the claim here is there's a dissonance between the constitution and the statutes and the manual. So they want injunctive and declaratory relief. They want the court to come in and tell them what the appropriate decision is. A current and ripe case for controversy exists here and the balance of the harm weigh in favor of stopping Jocelyn Benson. To not stop these unlawful directives that go against the constitution, such as the secretary's instructions would allow a single state officer to circumvent and essentially amend valid and enforceable constitutional mandates on the same subject. That is certainly not in the public interest, nor would the public be harmed by ensuring that each absent voter ballot originated from and was intended to be completed as required under the constitution. And so therefore they want a declaration that Jocelyn Benson's instructions from her election manual, where she interpreted that statute to say that a U.S. citizen who has never resided in the United States, but who has a parent, legal guardian, or spouse was last domiciled in Michigan is eligible to vote so long as the citizen is not registered or voted in any other state. So Jocelyn, it sounds like, is latching on to a statute there, right? Mirroring that language a lot and saying, but the statute is also unconstitutional pursuant to RNC's argument. Now order the secretary to rescind her instruction found in the manual and direct them to circulate a new manual that has that removed, saying that they're not eligible to vote. Stop the secretary from accepting any voter registration forms in any format until they can confirm residency or UOCAVA status, one of the two, and order the secretary to take all steps to remedy the harms caused by her unconstitutional actions. Issue all the necessary directives to reject those ballots. Update the public facing websites and voter registration portals to say those are not acceptable. Update all necessary voter registration forms and reject the ballots that are cast by the overseas voters who never resided in Michigan and saying, including ballots of overseas voters who submitted a federal postcard application or a write in absentee ballot checkbox checking the box. I've never lived in the United States. If they check that box doesn't count in the alternative direct Jocelyn Benson to segregate the ballots by overseas voters who never resided in Michigan, including ballots of overseas voters who submitted the postcard. We may ascertain the scope of what these buckets look like signed by these attorneys, Brandon L. Davis and Charles R. Spies there in Washington, D.C. and in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So an interesting filing. And Jocelyn Benson has a little bit more teeth than I suspected at the start of this because they did identify another statute that has language that she's mirroring in many ways. But the problem with all of that is that it doesn't comport with the Constitution. And we've seen this happen time and time again. The Constitution gets usurped, not amended. They just implement stuff that will give them tactical advantages and then boom, it's exploited by Jocelyn Benson. Other cases, including in Georgia, earlier this week, we talked about a lawsuit brought by Democrat groups to extend the registration in Georgia using the hurricane as an excuse. And as you'll see, that objective has been a failure. A federal judge has denied a preliminary injunction requiring the reopening of voter registration in Georgia due to the impact of Hurricane Helene. So that's not going to be happening in Georgia. And some people are upset about this. We're deeply disappointed. We're going to continue to fight relentlessly for access to voter registration and more. Same thing happened in Florida. They tried this again. The League of Women Voters still trying to determine if they have superpowers or not, but they also wanted to open registration and extend it in Florida. That got denied as well. So you see the plaintiff's motion for a temporary restraining order has been denied. So signed by the judge, Robert L. Hinkle. So those are some election litigation updates. Of course, we'll be here continuing to cover what's happening in Michigan, elsewhere, and more.